Prophet Ubert Angel seems to be trending on social media after his reaction with respect to the movie on Netflix. Now, first, before I made this video, I took my time to watch the movie myself. So if you haven't watched it, probably, I hope I don't get to give you some spoilers, but I'll give a quick summary or would I say a review of the movie while reacting to a video that has been making rounds of what Ubert Angel had to say about Archbishop Duncan Williams and in the same process as well talks about Apostle Aroma Osai in a way that makes me see him as you know when the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If you are in for this particular conversation, see you after the short intro. So let's, let's, let's look at this particular trend. You see, I see Hubert Angel on the same level pegging as Udmeje. For generation to generation, I remain powerful. Come on, you know what I think about Udmeje by this time. <laughs> the only thing is that Hubert Angel is just a packaged version of Udmeje. What God has told me is I'm a leader to this dispensation in the prophetic. Now, what Hubert Angel had to really talk about this particular movie, where he gets to take a swipe at Archbishop Duncan Williams and Aramo Sai is what I want to play for you right now. So please listen. Now look at what Nigeria and Ghana are doing. Disappointing. How people are making movies to discredit genuine prophets. So the devil has even bought into the and you have generals, even archbishops are appearing in movies to discredit Christianity. I understand when fake apostles do it. But when archbishops start doing it, when bishops start doing it, that are well respected in the realm, while they are highlighting a fault, they are also messing up. Because they are telling the world that it's okay, they believe there is this fake movement. Yes, there is. But it is nothing compared to the actual thing. If you teach people fake stuff, they won't know when the real comes. Because fake things come in many forms. But real currency, real money is, you know, you know when, when the bank tellers are trained, they are not trained to spot fake currencies. They are trained on what the real money looks like. So that when the fake comes, they can see it. But we are producing even movies, even financing movies that talk again as apostles, talk again as prophets, talk again as pastors. Do you know what? Now Christianity is lost. People think everyone is faking. And Christians are excited when a preacher is only able to talk without power. They say this one is the genuine. Now, just in case, because I know how they work, um, that video or that part is being, you know, copyright claimed. I wrote the things he said down, which is something I'll be discussing, of course, in this video. Note the way he starts, of course, talking about the movie. He talks about discrediting genuine prophet. Now, if you had watched Prophet Suddenly, probably if you hadn't seen my video on that, I did a review talking about the lessons you should learn if you had watched that particular movie here on YouTube. So that's a comment he was making on that one. He said it was, you know, discrediting Christianity. Who are the people that have really discredited Christianity than the likes of Prophet Ubert Angel? Sometimes I have to respect them, please, my dear friends, to call them by the titles they call themselves. That's one obligation I also have to my audience so that there are people who are watching me would not feel offended that I call whoever they adore or follow by their names without their titles. At least that also demifies them and put them on that status of like, okay, this person is here, I am here. But again, my next video will make you understand a couple of things I will be highlighting in this particular video. So when he talked about that, I just thought to myself, someone that was in the gold mafia scandal, a global menace, someone I exposed just the other day, like what is more real than someone who would fake miracles in his own church? See, my dear friends here, 
there are many situations to even term Obert Angel a high profile charlatan without missing words. And I talk and I give examples, like the example, of course, I'm giving right now. Just to refresh some of you, your memories, my old audience, of course, do know about this particular breakdown analysis of him faking quote and unquote credit score miracle in his own church. Not one example, not two examples, three examples in his own church. And it also gets to explain what happens in this movie that triggers him, as I'll be discussing as well, key things that that particular movie covered, which many people did not pay attention to. You know, for me watching quote and unquote a Christian movie, I'll look at it based on what are the directors of this movie trying to present? What are they trying to achieve with the message they are passing to quote and unquote a Christian watching that particular movie? And since I exposed that particular shenanigan that it happened in his church, even with the whole miracle money menace with him and Apostle Suleiman, well, what happened in Nigeria and those that were involved in that, have you seen any of them come and respond like they will come and say, Last time Uba Tenjo was saying, oh, the same Apostle Arome he's alleging right now, even though he didn't mention his name, of course, by saying, I understand when fake apostles do so. I understand when fake apostles do it. That is if I'm inferring right that he's talking about the real person. Because the last time I checked, if you're talking about Ghana and Nigeria, recently two movies that have come out to really be a striking point on conversations in Christian circles has been prophets suddenly talking about the prophetic ministry in a way and of course I hope I'm making sense with this video so he's just an example of a disgrace to Christianity with what he propagates so now with this premise I have given right here let's now look at the video itself but I know Majid Michel for a long time I've lived in Ghana for a long time i would say all of us know archbishop duncan williams when i talked about um, the whole freemason thing and then his ties with joshua Solomon. listening to you talking about archbishop duncan williams that way but when archbishops start doing it when bishops start doing it that are well respected in the realm while is they are highlighting a fault they are also messing up and stop this whole hyper amplification of yourselves as whatever Look at the examples of the apostle. You see a great sense of humility even when they talk about themselves. Not even about their own grace, but the grace of God. And you see this also exemplified in the movie. And in the body of Christ, it's not as if the, there's a body of Christ and the pastors are under the head somewhere. And then after which comes the members going down, down, down now. We are all members. That's what the scripture says of course he gives some special gifts and special callings and special abilities to do special things but it doesn't make them owners of the body it is his church of course christianity has had its problems and has had its its challenges and it always happens when we start erecting barriers i am anointed you are not I have a special grace. You don't have it. We may be age mates, but we are not grace mates. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> we are not grace mates. What, how were you saved? How were you saved? By grace. How was I saved? We are grace mates. You know why the African church likes barriers? Because the African society likes barriers. We live in a hierarchical society where power must always be concentrated at the top and hammer down everybody. So we become Christians. And although Christ is building something else, we allow our culture to undermine what Christ is building. And if we don't build the church the way Christ wants it to be built, then we will be like Israel, with great promise, yet going into captivity. There are a couple of things I learned watching the movie, and uh, I wanted to look at this particular point. Number one is monetary ministry. Number two is, of course, the concept of what God cannot do does not exist also appeared in the movie. 
Number three, of course, right here is the fall and rise of men of God. Number four also looks at the subject of spiritual fatherhood. And then number five right here looks at dealing with temptation. Five things I learned if you had watched it. Okay, so let's look at a couple of things. Monetary ministry. That also gets to explain the pathway Majid Michel got to play as well in the movie. Now, even though his own father was a pastor and he took after his father, and his mother was always telling him, why are you capitalizing on the audience, or would I say on your followers, to make money for yourself? He always taught his own pastors to emphasize on the spirit of giving. How does that even reflect what happens today in the church? It's very practical. Movies are meant to be relatable. So when directors are making movies, it comes from a place of understanding things that happen in the church. The movie itself was very realistic. When the Bible talks about fleeing temptation, I think it's actually very realistic with that for our own good. Because him going, being in a situation whereby he just realized that he can't get to father a child with his own wife based on the fact that she lost her womb. Him realizing that at the same time being in an entanglement with the singer who he got pregnant. The point where he goes to visit her and say that he's trying to see if he can fight that particular emotion he's feeling, you don't have to put yourself in that situation. There are some battles you have to fight in your closet. Not going to go and see, let me test and see if I can stand this. There are some things you cannot go and test and see if you can stand. Imagine me now like this. I see fine girl and fine girl invites me to come to her house. I say I'm going to go and see if I will stand, kakaraka, or if nothing will happen. One day, if I go there, one now come piago. Yes. So what would I do? One day, Why? Because if you think that you have, you have, you have stood, <laughs> one day be careful lest you fall. And that was the idea of the movie when it comes to the rise and fall of a man of God. So at the point, of course, his restoration reminds me of the famous story about the person of Omogwai who got into uh, a fornication and then with a miraculous experience, it became evident of the fact that the anointing of God is still on him. Now, I was not there when that story was told or if that story is true. I'm just giving you an example of something that is at least more real. So, if the movie is portraying, let's say, something like that, that he had to raise by the power of God, even, he, even though he didn't believe that God was still on his side or the anointing of God was still on him, God used him to raise a man from the wheelchair. Those who were doubting him, God actually proved himself through him. You see, that's one thing I was talking about here at the beginning of the video. You don't try to help God. God proves himself through you. At that point, you cannot say, it is my strength. Now the concept of spiritual fatherhood. Now I made an extensive video looking about the subject of spiritual fatherhood. If you haven't watched the video, probably you need to watch it because I looked at the scripture very, very clearly on that particular subject from the point of Jesus to Paul and the early church. And I established a couple of things that makes me decide what I call doctrine, at least as someone that have been in scriptural exegesis for a long time. But anyway, if you had watched the video, you get to understand what probably true spiritual fatherhood is exemplified in this particular movie. So when the pastor seen fell into fornication, the church suspended him administrative procedure. What if it's now a case whereby the general overseer is the one that is nactalizing everything nactalizable? My dear friend, do you think a general overseer would step down? So you can be in a position as quote and unquote a father to reprimand other people based on structure because churches today is all about structure and modus operandi. But you yourself, would you also subject yourself to that particular principles? I don't see that happening in church today. So how does that even get to discredit Christianity? Because even at that as well, at least from the point of a spiritual father and a leader of a church, the junior pastor who messed up, of course, had to go through a process. I, I can't say that, of course, if it was a general overseer. So maybe in that particular case, it will now be reflected on the other party, Majid Michel, being a general overseer himself. God had to be the one to touch him. God had to be the one to make him learn the lesson. And of course, 
He learned the hard way. So sometimes when I see things that happen with general overseers, I only pray to God that they repent. In their closet, they repent, probably publicly if they want to do so. Because God would deal with them. But when it comes to the junior pastors and their situations, the spiritual quote-unquote father becomes the one to administer discipline. And maybe they don't get to learn a lesson along the way. But towards the ending part of the movie is where Duncan Williams actually do some teaching when the movie ended. At that time, the general overseer who had been watching and learning from Duncan Williams as well, after what happened with him, that is Majid Michel, came and kneeled before him and then more like submitted to him, I would say. But Duncan Williams said something that Paul would say and I would even say myself. Recently, I made a post and I was telling you people, if I ever cease to be a Christian, never ever for any reason follow my path. I, it, my, I, am, never he, I am not here to be an influencer, even though I have influenced many people when it comes to thinking. So Duncan Williams said, a lot of ministries are taking shortcuts, but shortcuts would only cut you short. Looking at how ministers get to operate. He now said, do not be like me while I am trying to be like Jesus. In the process, encouraging that, of course, you can be inspired by me, but don't try to be like me. And I think when it comes to the focal point of Christianity, our eyes should really, really be focused on Jesus, not on man, because man would fail you. When I come here, just look at how some of you react. You look at, see in the comment section now, that I'm talking about Obad Angel in a way that is not pleasing to his followers. Read the comments on how they are reacting. Some of them are reacting like bingos. Why am I saying so? Because that is more like their model. But when Christ is your focus, you will get to realize that even the man that you hold so high and so dear can actually fail you. Would, would you dare stand up in your church when your pastor is talking about another pastor or when he's preaching heresy boldly, say, oh, pastor, no, what you are saying, I don't agree with. Do you go back home, watch a video of your pastor saying something that is wrong and then have the effrontery to be like, and um, pastor, this thing you said, I realize that it's not okay. Um, it probably it's not true from what I see. You dare not. Africa is the hope of Christianity. We must build proper Christianity. Because of there's too much need and poverty. Our ministry is now becoming need-based. Whilst we minister to people's needs, they must know doctrine. They must know what is right. They must know who God is. They must know why we believe in the Trinity. They must know why we believe in Jesus. They must know the foundations of their faith. It can't always be about receive, 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 receive. We must also teach in addition to receiving, to receive knowledge, to receive doctrine, to receive sound doctrine. Because let me tell you, in Africa, we preach heresy freely and boldly. African preachers, they, they preach because whilst he's preaching, he's manufacturing heresy. He's manufacturing and, and, and the people are eating it because they don't know anything. It may save us. It may prosper us. It may make us popular. But it is taking us into captivity. It's taking us right into captivity like Israel. And if Christianity dies in Africa, that's it. If it dies in Africa, and Christianity will not die in Africa because people resisted us, but because we polluted it so much that it was no longer Christianity. It's in the church. We preach it, but it's not Christianity. There is no historical faith there. There is no doctrine there. It is all theater and gymnastics and all of that going on. We can fill large auditoriums, but it will not be Christianity. That is Africa's challenge. Pollution of the faith. 
doctrinal pollution. Yes, we must minister to people's needs. Yes, people must experience the power of God. What can we do but do that? But in the midst of that, included with that, it's soundness of doctrine. If you watch this video to this point, just type Jesus is Lord in the comment section. Uh, let's, let's confuse other people because some people don't get to watch my videos this long. I will see you in my next conversation. There's a lot of things we have to talk about. I've been away for so long and I will talk about things that I haven't talked about. <laughs>